Hello everyone. Um, today I have a very special cookie recipe to share with you guys. It's something that I concocted last week when we had a holiday cookie exchange at a friend's house. Um, and so I was thinking, um, what is a flavor combination that I super love around this time of the holidays? Of course I love ginger snaps, um, gingerbread, that gingery flavor. Um, but I also kind of thought back to this latte that we used to make. Um, we used to work at a badass coffee in Manassas, Virginia. Um, which I don't know if you guys have heard of that coffee chain, but it's a Hawaiian coffee chain and it's so, so good. Um, but around the holidays, my manager dreamt up this recipe um, called a ginger snap white mocha latte. So um, it had the Monin ginger bread syrup, it had um, Giardelli white chocolate sauce in it, um, and it was so, so good. Just a combination of that plus the espresso, the smell was just the most dreamy, cozy scent ever. Um, literally, if I could smell one smell for the rest of my life, that would be it. That combination of scents is just the best. Um, so um, when it came to the holiday cookie exchange, I thought, well, why don't I make that latte into a cookie, of course. Um, I like to put coffee in pretty much everything. Um, and of course, I love the combination of flavors. So um, today we are going to make a brown butter ginger snap white mocha cookie. Um, it's going to have some brown butter, of course, ginger, um, lots of ginger <laughs> and other spices. Um, we're going to have some white chocolate in it, espresso powder, um, and it's going to be so, so good. Um, I have had a lot of requests to um, get this recipe out to everybody because I've already really enjoyed this cookie. Um, it's even got orange zest in it. Oh my gosh, it smells so good when you're baking it too. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on this cookie recipe. For this recipe, you will need a stick and a half of butter. You're gonna need three cups of all-purpose flour. Um, you're also going to need um, a tablespoon plus a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. Um, we've got half a teaspoon of cloves in here, and then also one and a quarter teaspoons of cinnamon. So um, that's all here. We've also got a tablespoon of espresso powder. Um, I use this brand. Um, we also have a teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of salt here. We've got the zest of one orange. Um, we have a cup of granulated sugar, half a cup of um, dark brown sugar. I always prefer dark brown sugar when I'm baking. Um, we have two eggs here. Um, we have one of these bars basically of, um, it's four ounces of just Baker's white chocolate. Um, you could use white chocolate chips if you wanted, but I just really, really like um, the texture um, and the aesthetic of when you have chopped white chocolate in your cookies. I just think it looks better. Um, it's just, it kind of gives it like a better feel. And we're gonna use a teaspoon of vanilla as well. And then we are going to use a quarter teaspoon of molasses. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna brown up some butter. If you've never actually browned butter before for a recipe, it adds a nice nutty flavor and just kind of like a whole nother layer of flavor. Um, I love to do this when I make things like cookies um, because it just adds that little something extra. Um, so what you do is you take your butter and you stick it in a um, saucepan and you melt everything down. Once the um, solids, because it's kind of like water and solids in your sticks of butter, um, once the solids sort of like brown up and cook, um, then you know that it's done. Um, you just want a nice kind of caramel color to it. Um, once you get that color going, take it off the heat super quick or it will burn um, and stick it in like a measuring cup or something or just like a bowl so that it stops cooking because you don't want it to get too, too brown and burn. Now pay attention and make sure that you do not burn your brown butter, but if you do, which I have done, um, you just filter it through a coffee filter, which takes forever and get all the burn bits out of there um, But then you should still have some nice caramel colored brown butter that you can still use. Um, it's not the end of the world Okay, so the whole entire process where it's browning you see it kind of bubbling um, a lot and now that it's kind of like stopped bubbling um, for the most part you can kind of see the um, brown milk or butter solids I guess in the bottom of the pan and that is the point at which you really need to uh, make sure you stir it a little bit maybe keep it on the heat for like another minute or so that is perfect you see those brown bits that is our brown butter let's go ahead and remove it from the heat turn off the heat of course and we'll pour it in here Okay, 
While the butter is chilling in the fridge, we're gonna go ahead and mix together our dry ingredients. Um, so we have our three cups of flour right here. Um, we have got our um, one tablespoon plus half a teaspoon of ginger in here, a half teaspoon of cloves, and one and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, and we're gonna drop that into our flour mixture. Or just flour. <laughs> it's just flour at this point. Um, we also have one half teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of baking soda in here. I think I got some cinnamon in there. Okay, and then we also have a tablespoon of espresso powder here. And we will just go ahead and mix that all together and then you can just kind of deeply inhale the smell of spices and espresso that are in this bowl. It smells amazing. So make sure that's all together. I like to kind of like whisk it um, pretty um, intensely just to get some air back in that flour. But don't get flour all over the place. Nobody needs that. So we've got our brown butter in the mixing bowl and we're going to pour in our white sugar and then our brown sugar and we're going to cream it together for about three minutes, uh, making sure that you scrape down the sides of the bowl pretty often, um, since it's gonna kind of build up on the sides there, um, and you want everything incorporated nicely. So just beat it for about three minutes and get a little bit of air into that butter. Next, we're going to add our eggs. What I like to do is crack my egg into a little bowl just to make sure that I get any eggshells out of it or anything um, and make sure that the egg is fine to use before you add it to your actual recipe. If you crack it into your uh, mixing bowl where the other ingredients are, then you've kind of ruined everything and you have to start all over. Um, so put that egg in there. Um, beat it one egg at a time. Make sure it gets incorporated. Then you can go ahead and add the second egg as well. Go ahead and add a splash of vanilla here, about a teaspoon or two. Um, and then we are going to add our molasses. And I like to spray down the cup um, with a little bit of ham spray um, that I'm gonna put the molasses into. And that way it gets the um, molasses or any kind of sticky substance out of the cup a little bit more easily as you're pouring it in. I'm not saying it's gonna be like perfect, um, but at least most of the molasses will actually get into the bowl um, versus sticking to the measuring cup. So we're gonna beat all of those ingredients together. Um, and then after this, we are going to add um, the orange zest right here. And make sure when you zest your orange, you don't get any of the white parts of the orange um, in the zest because that's really, really bitter. You just want the orange outer part of the um, orange peel, I guess. Okay, let's add our dry ingredients. Um, and then about two thirds of the way into adding the flour and everything, add in your white chocolate chunks um, along with your flour. Um, that way it all gets incorporated at once and you don't have to over mix everything and mix in the chocolate separately. Um, once the dough just comes together, make sure you do not over mix it. Um, we're going to um, wrap it with some plastic wrap, stick it in the fridge, preferably overnight, but if you've only got an hour or two, you can still use it. It's just kind of ideal if you refrigerate it overnight. Now preheat your oven to 350 right before you scoop your cookies. Um, I like pretty big cookies, um, so I roll it into a ball about this big and then stick it on the cookie tray and flatten it out just a little bit. Um, 
because we don't want it to spread too far out we want it to kind of stay nice and thick and that'll give it a nice chewy texture with a nice crunchy exterior that to me is my ideal cookie texture Oh yeah, and make sure you wash your hands before you do all this, of course. I shouldn't have to say that, but you'd be surprised. Make sure you wash your hands before you roll out all of your cookie dough. It's time to stick our cookies into the oven. Uh, we're gonna bake them for seven minutes uh, for the first go round. Then we'll take them out, bang them on the counter like so. I like to knock all the air out. Um, and then I like to rotate it, bang it again, and then bake for another three minutes. And then once you get it out, make sure you bang it on the counter again, cool it on the cookie tray for five minutes, and then move them to a wire rack. Okay, so after that, I was heading out the door and forgot to film an outro, so I have a really, really crappy outro for this video, and I'm so, so sorry. Just ignore that and just move on. All right, guys, so those are my brown butter ginger snap white mocha cookies. Um, if you guys have any more requests for recipes or anything like that, please let me know. I will happily bake and record that for you guys. Um, and seriously, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Um, you guys have no idea. It means so, so much to me, so I really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas. Uh, please subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.